Hello there and welcome to Lead Tutors Extramuras YouTube channel. My name is Anslem. Today we will be attempting biology jam question 2017 from 21 to 40. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you know when we upload subsequent uh, editions of our question and answer. Thank you. 21. In an experiment to determine the percentage of humans and water in a soil sample, the following results were obtained. Weight of the evaporating dish alone, 80.5 grams. Weight of basins and soil, 101.5 grams. Weight, of, weight after drying the soil in the oven, 99.0 grams. Weight of the basin and roasted soil, 95.5 grams. The question is, the percentage of the humans in the soil sample is what? So we find the amount of, so of, of humans in the soil, and then we calculate that against the total quantity of sample. So mass of soil with humans is 101.5 minus 80.5 and that will give us 21 grams the mass of humans itself will be mass of humans is 99 Point zero minus ninety five point five minus ninety five point five. That will give us uh, three point five grams. So percentage of humans in the soil sample of humans in the soil is three point five times twenty one. Since it's, we are looking for percentage, you know we need to multiply by 100 grams, or 100% rather, sorry. And that's going to give us 16.7%. 16.7%. And the correct answer will be A, 16.7%. Question number 22. The presence of termite and earthworm in soil promotes A, porosity and fertility, porosity and aeration, aeration and fertility, acidity and aeration. Now, the presence of termite and earthworm pro promotes porosity and fertility. Why? Because uh, the earthworm will help, you know, break down the soil particles, thereby promoting porosity. And then uh, the termites helps in, you know, improving the uh, decomposition of uh, uh, organic materials, thereby improving the fertility of the, uh, of the soil. Porosity and fertility, which is A. Question number 23. Which of the following instrument is used to measure temperature? A, thermometer, B, hygrometer, C, anemometer, D, hydrometer. The correct answer is A, thermometer. Thermometer is used for measuring temperature. Hygrometer is used for measuring humidity. Uh, an anemometer is used for measuring wind speed. You know, so the uh, instrument used for measuring temperature is thermometer. The correct answer is A. 24. Which of the following is a sex-linked character? A. Dwarfism. B. Albinism. C. Tongue rolling. D. Color blindness. 
An example of a sex-linked character would be color blindness, night blindness, and uh, hemophilia. Uh, uh, that is when you hemorrhage and difficulty in your blood to clot. So uh, albinism, dwarfism, and tongue rolling isn't an example of sex-linked character. So the correct answer would be color blindness. Color blindness. So D is the answer, color blindness. Question 25. The outermost tissue of the herbaceous root is the A, cortical, B, pericycle, C, epidermis, and D, endodermis. The correct answer is epidermis. The epidermis is the outermost layer of the plant body, which means the plant's leaves, plant flower, the stem, every part of the plant, the outermost part of, the, uh, uh, of a plant body is known as the epidermis, so, which also includes the outermost part of the roots. So the correct answer is epidermis. C is the answer. 26. The respective tissue that transport water and manufactured food in plants are what? Water is transported by xylem and manufactured food is transported by phloem. So the correct answer is A, xylem and phloem. Xylem and phloem, which is A. Before we continue, I want to remind you that this is Lead Tutors Extramurals YouTube channel and I want to encourage you right now to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that so that you will know when we upload the next episode of this subject and other subjects. Thank you. Question 27. An adaptive feature of plants in the savanna is a fissured back. B, few grasses, C, tall trees, D, long life span. The correct answer, you know, will be A, fissured bark, which is the bark of the plants that helps it to conserve water. Uh, uh, and it's, it's also known for having a lot of grass, not few grasses. It doesn't have tall trees. The trees are usually very short and uh, 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 long lifespan is not necessarily uh, a, a characteristic of plants that you find in the savanna habitat. So the correct answer there is fissured bark, which is an adaptive feature of plants in the savanna for conservation of water. So the correct answer there is A, fissured bark. 28, a grasshopper scorticle becomes green during rainy season and black after fire. The reason for the change is A, obtain food, B, predators, C, secure mates, and D, escape detection. The reason for this is the change in color in grasshopper is, as a, you know, is to avoid detection, both to predators and to prey. So it preys on other animals. So when it changes color, it changes its color to blend with the environment so that the prey that it wants to eat or prey upon will not detect it, and also to also hide itself from predators. So the correct answer is to escape detection, both from the prey and from the predators. So the correct answer is D, escape detection. Question 29. Which of the following is the most advanced plants? Which of the following is the most advanced plants? A, Macantia. B, Dryopteris. C, Chlamydomonas. And D, Spirogyra. Now, Spirogyra and Chlamydomonas are unicellular organisms, so they are the least advanced here. Uh, Macantia is a bryophyta, and uh, Dryopteris is a pteridophyta. Pteridophytas are more advanced than Bryophyta. So the correct answer is Dryopteris, which is B. The correct answer is Dryopteris, which is B. Question 30. The soil type with the least ability to retain nutrients is Sandy Lomi, 
clay loamy, loam, sand. The sand with the least ability to retain nutrients is sandy soils. So the correct answer is D. Sandy soil has the least ability to retain nutrients. So they are the least fertile, fertile soils, sandy soils. So the correct answer is D. A hummingbird is able to feed on nectar because its beak is short, slender, and ridged. Short, strong, and conical. Long, slender, and slightly curved. Long, wide, and slightly curved. You know, for, to obtain nectar from a flower, you will need a, a beak that can go inside the flower to obtain the nectar. So you're going to have a beak that is adapted for that. So the hummingbird will usually have a long, slender, and slightly curved beak. So the correct answer is C, long, slender, and slightly curved. Long, slender, and slightly curved. Question 32. Use the diagram to answer the question that follows. The part labeled III acts as what? So first, let us know what each of the parts is called. The part labeled I is called the gill arc. The part labeled II is called the gill rica. The part labeled III is called the gill filaments. And the gill filament is where the exchange of oxygen you know, takes place. So the correct answer would be exchange surface. So at the gill filament, that is where you know, the exchange of oxygen takes place. So the correct answer is C, exchange surface. Okay, question number 33. Before I proceed to question 33, I want to remind you once again that you should hit the subscription button so you know the next time we upload our next video. Question number 33. The effect of overcrowding is A, immigration, B, reduced competition, C, emigration, D, reduced mortality. Immigration will lead to emigration. What is emigration? Emigration is that because the, uh, the place is overcrowded, animals will tend to move out of that habitat into another habitat. Uh, it is slightly different from immigration. Immigration is that an organism finds a conducive environment that it can utilize, and so it establishes its own there. That is immigration. Emigration, on the other hand, is that it, because things have become non-conducive for the organism, it moves out of that habitat in search for another habitat. So overcrowding will lead to emigration. Reduced competition, no. Overcrowding will usually lead to increased competition and usually uh, also increased mortality. So the correct answer is emigration, C. Question number 34. The vertebrates that allows the skull to nod and rotate are A, axis and cervical, B, atlas and thoracic, C, axis and atlas, D, atlas and cervical. Well, the, the, the vertebrate that allows the head the skull to nod and rotate is the cervical vertebrates. However, the cervical vertebrate is divided into two, is divided into axis and atlas. So the two of them functions to allow the head to, uh, one of them allows the head to turn, the other allows the head to rotate. So the correct answer is axis and atlas. And that will be C, axis and atlas, C. Question 35. The component of the cell that determines paternity resides in the A, centrosome, B, ribosome, C, nucleus, 
and D, mitochondria, the components that determines all the uh, uh, hereditary components of a cell are contained in the nucleus of the cell. So the correct answer is C, nucleus. Nucleus is the part of the cell that contains all its hereditary material. So the correct answer is C. Question 36. Which of the following big type is an adaptation for aquatic feeding? Now, for an aquatic feeder, they will usually, uh, for example, you have ducks. They are aquatic feeders. They will usually have uh, serrated beaks. Uh, so a serrated beaks, like in that of, um, uh, you know, a, a, a serrated edges in the, on their beaks will usually be adapted for aquatic feeding. And uh, if you look at the images on the screen, the one that most described that will be D, a B. Uh, B describes uh, an aquatic feeder. D there is uh, most adapted for uh, for a, a humming, most likely a humming bed that uh, that uh, you know that requires long beaks to pick, you know. Uh, true holes and all of that. So the beak adapted for aquatic feeding will be B. Question 37. Use the diagram to answer the question that follows. We have seen this diagram in an earlier question, but it's the same diagram, but a different question. The part labeled II is the a. So we, 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 the I is, I would say, is the gill arc. The II is the gill rica. And the III is the gill filament. So II is the gill rica. The correct answer is D, gill rica. Question number 38. The insect trapping by the leaves of a Venus flytrap is an example of a behavioral adaptation but let me quickly explain that uh, the venus fl fly trap has airs in them that are called triggers whenever anything touches this air the leaves you know you know flips and closes trapping whatever is in between the leaves and that kind of adaptation is called behavioral adaptation so the insect trapping by the leaves of a venus fly trap is an example of a behavioral adaptation. So the correct answer is D. The correct answer is D, behavioral adaptation. Question 39. Morphological variation in humans include A, height, skin, color, and tongue rolling, weight, fingerprints, and body shape, C, height, weight, and blood group, D, skin color, blood group, and height. Now, morphological variation includes uh, everything that has to do with physical appearance, which includes patterns, color, size, etc. So everything that has to do with physical appearance. So let's look at our options again. Height, skin, tongue rolling. Height is a morphological, skin color is, but tongue rolling is not. The next, B. Weight, fingerprint, and body shape, all of them are morphological variation. C, height, weight, and blood group. Blood group is not a morphological variation. D, skin color, blood group, and height. Blood group is not a morphological variation. So the correct answer is B, weight, fingerprint, and body shape. So the correct answer is B. Question number 40. Which of the following is correct about blood transfusion? A, group AB can only receive from group A and B and not from group O. B, group O can receive from group A and B and not from AB. C, group B can only donate to blood group B and not to AB and O. And D, group O can donate to group a, B, and A, B, but not receive. Uh, so to answer this question, we need to look at the blood transfusion chart that is now on your screen. Now, from this blood transfusion 
chart, you will agree with me that group O minus can donate to everyone, but it can only receive from itself. So group O can donate to group A, B, and AB, but it can only receive blood from itself, but it cannot receive. So the correct answer is D. Group O can donate to groups A, B, and AB, but cannot receive. With that, we have come to the end of 2017 Biology Jam question and answer, and I hope you have enjoyed every bit of it. If there is anything you didn't quite get clearly, you can go back to the video and go over it again. I'm sure you get it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tell your friends what you are gaining from Meet Tutors Extramurals YouTube channel. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.